Okay, so I just got finished pulling this little row of carrots. It was maybe two feet. Ignore the screaming child in the background. I have no idea where that's coming from. Do I need to call Child Protective Services? Anyway, so this is the pile of what I would consider perfect carrots. So it's not too shabby considering the fact that I'm growing them in a raised bed in the ground underneath. Excuse the fact that this isn't mowed. It rained about three inches. Hello, Beaker. How are you? Yes. Yes. Smile, you're on candy camera. So anyway, so this is a kind of a two-foot row. I had pulled carrots from this rest of this row and planted buckwheat along this side of the bed. You're on YouTube, hush. So this is what was remaining. Get my shadow out of there. So those are the, the perfect ones. There's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen or so. And then there's the pile of the not so perfect ones, the little dinky ones that are all curved and forking. And that was my own fault for not coming through and uh, thinning the carrots early on. But still a good, late, good, good harvest. This has been a pretty good year actually for carrots for me. I've discovered this is a good carrot raising bed. I just add a layer of compost in the spring before I'm ready to plant like in April or so and uh, I'll usually do my rows widthwise. This is a 4 by 8 bed so I will usually plant them along you know side to side the short side so they're like 4 foot rows a little bit less obviously counting for the sides um, and then interplant with either radishes and or lettuce let those come up by the time the carrots are up the other stuff is already harvested. I've got a row of bush beans at the end there. They're looking quite bedraggled because of the darn Japanese beetles. I've lived here for seven years. I've had maybe in those the past six years, maybe a handful of Japanese beetles. And now all of a sudden they're blooming. They're, I must have let two of them get past me somehow. But the buckwheat here is still flowering. I'm trying to get to that stage of where, as you can see, hopefully you can see, I can't see with the sun, but starting to set buckwheat. But I don't want to yank it all up because the bees are still using it. So probably in the next couple of days I will be yanking out the rest so but I'm basically clearing out this spot I'm gonna sow uh, rutabagas in this little spot right here and then every few days I'm gonna do that's a uh, lettuce that's gone to seed I didn't catch and that's a carrot that went flower started flowering so I just left it there because the pollinators like it too and uh, so I may have a mess here a few weeds coming in here not too bad though so what I'm gonna basically do is I'm gonna chop down the buckwheat when I feel it's totally past its flowering and then use it to bed down blank spaces like over here in my almost gone tomato bed it's getting that late summer yeah you need to give up on me but I really don't want to give up on tomatoes this early so I'll probably put the buckwheat after it's chopped down down here to suppress weeds like there are over there looks like this basil got blown over poor basil but uh yeah now that cooler weather is here I really need to get out here and do more maintenance type stuff. I just put up my shade cloth. Then I'm gonna plant some cabbages and 
broccoli in. This was, as you can see, there's a couple more tomatoes still going. These are my Juliet tomatoes, which I absolutely love. They're a grape tomato. And of all my tomatoes, this is the one that seems to persist the longest. But I put this up here. I'm sitting out here waiting to see if I need to do any corrections because of the wind. We get some beastly winds out here. And then, just as a warning for those of you who like to feed the birds, so I have a bird feeder here that the birds absolutely love. And then this is the consequence. I got a sunflower coming up, and I don't know if that's sorghum, smaller sunflowers. So I need to decide if I'm going to leave, try and weed whack around the sunflower, leave it there, or if I'm going to just weed whack everything down, because this is supposed to be a little passageway, although with a bird feeder hanging down so low, I need to cinch that up a little bit better so it's not hanging down so low. For one thing, you can't walk through it very easily, and weed whacking is a lot of fun too. Walk, you know, walking along with the weed whacker, and all of a sudden, bam, forehead in the bird feeder, but also uh, cats, you know, kind of low-hanging fruit here and birds feeding and all of a sudden you have a cat jumping four feet off the ground to nab a bird. Not good for the wildlife, so. And of course, bird poop all over the place. Ooh, looks like I have a cucumber to harvest. Yeah, these cucumbers are not looking so hot. I've got a couple of replacements over here that are just starting to grow. I think I saw a, t a cucumber over here somewhere. Yep, yeah, over there on the other side of that post. But I may trim these back a little bit and see if they've got any more oomph to them. But although there's a nice little flower there. So, you never know with cucumbers. They'll either... I'll probably come in here and cut out some of the rattier looking leaves and maybe spray for fungal diseases and stuff like that. But I may also have to move my bird feeder because... So this thing, these are just storage white plastic storage barrels that I got cheap. I think they were like $10 each. I cut them in half around the equator, drilled holes in the bottom, and uh, filled with soil. As you can see, this one's getting a little low, so I'm going to have to top this off soon. I put, there's a sage in here that's not doing very well. There's a catnip. Rosemary, and then this is Anna's hyssop that's looking very ready. I need to cut this back too so we can get another flush before fall sets in. Um, the sage may need to get yanked out. I don't think it likes this spot very much. And then again, I may just yank everything out, replant what I want to replant, and then put something else in here. Um, got a lot of this Anna's hyssop. This is looking very ready right now, but the bees really love it, so I will keep it a, keep it around as long as it continues to function for me. So one reason why you should thin carrots a little bit better than what I did this year, that's four carrots. So instead of having four cat carrots, I have a Celtic carrot carrot knot. Celtic carrot knot. Say that five times fast. <laughs>